Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited and delighted to be with you guys again uh, with this episode of the podcast. And uh, it's an impromptu show. Wasn't planned. We usually go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we figured we'd do one on hump, hump Day Wednesday because, uh, yeah, that's how we do it. So, um, again, excited to be with you guys. I want to say a huge thank you to uh, everybody, first of all, hanging out with us in the chat, everybody listening um, uh, and hanging out live, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, wherever you are listening live. Shout out to you guys. Um, and also, huge thank you and shout out to everybody supporting my work via patreon and all the partners we have over there because we are a listener supported show listener funded and i could not do this wonderful work without you guys so thank you guys for believing in me and partnering with the ministry that god has given me and a shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so shout out to actually today daniel jedediah cook shout out to you brother um should be able to meet you sunday i'm going to go to uh, visit a church and there's a lot of synchronicities in, 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 in this here. So I'm going to go visit a church that and maybe we could talk about it a little bit. But even my, my guest today is actually the person who brought his name up. I looked him up and now I'm going to church with him Sunday. And uh, and then he's also scheduled to be on the podcast as well. So when you're on the highway of holiness, as the scripture calls it, like everything seems to line up, man. There's synchronicities and, and everything works out for the good of those who love him. And uh, so it's really cool how everything's interwoven and connected. So shout out to David. Uh, I'm sorry, Daniel Jedediah Cook. And he's also going to be on the podcast uh, next week, I believe it is. Um, shout out to Victor. Um, La Tempa, thank you for believing in the work and coming on as well. And David Wong, you guys are awesome. If you would like to partner with my work, head on over to patreon.com backslash true seeker. There you get access to my entire discography of work. It's over 200 songs. Um, you get access to our Thursday night school of the mystics, our Sunday morning seer class and a bunch of really cool other stuff that's available over there as well. So check that out. Patreon.com backslash true seeker. My book is almost done. And um, I'm going to be rolling out a pre-order here pretty soon. So it's called The Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God. And as uh, soon as that's done, you guys will be the first ones to get the alert over there on Patreon. So uh, thank you guys for all the support. And now, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring on tonight's guest, my friend John Tussie. John, welcome to the podcast, brother. How are you? Hey, Derek. I am so happy to be with you today. And this was very impromptu. I'm sure glad we could connect. You know, I'm uh, uh, in transit, actually, from, you know, where I live in Hawaii. Uh, I'll be uh, in um, Mississippi soon. But uh, I'm here in Inglewood, California right now and uh, had time to connect. I'm sure glad it worked out. Yeah, awesome. I uh, I first heard about you, what, uh, two days ago, I think it was, Um, um just maybe yesterday everything kind of runs together but we we really uh booked this really quick but i've seen your interview with with gil hodges and um on um on, on his podcast and uh I, I loved what you guys were talking about then at the end of it you said that you were you were going on tour you're taking a road trip and going to be doing some dates and you said you were going to be in alabama so i was like let me see where's he going to be in alabama let's just let's just shoot most people come north alabama birmingham and i look he's like he's going to be in daphne alabama which was it's literally you know 30 minutes away from me i'm like he's in my neck of the woods i need to i want to uh, you know uh, join with like-minded people and, and and you know we could do a lot on the internet 
it, but it's different when you can meet in person. But um, I'm gonna have yeah. to catch you on the next go around because that thing is already slam packed and it, that thing's been promoted for a while. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to catch you next year when you come back as well. So looking forward to that. Yeah. For- sure yeah definitely but yeah i've been been checking out yeah. your work checking out your music and, and and really reading the uh reviews about your music and seeing the impact that it's had on people who who listen to it and it's really interesting because there's uh several people even in the chat room even before we went live and it's like oh john i've got several of his cds i love him it's like wow so that's always cool when we kind of sh- you know share <laughs> the same audience and they already know who you yeah. are and things like yeah. that so i guess for yeah. those those people who don't know who you are if this is their first time hearing about you or seeing you uh go ahead and just let, you know let people know who you are and what you bring to the table okay well uh my i've been in um involved with uh music ministry for quite a long time it's uh 47 like, wow. years plus so that's always ever since cool. i was 17 and i must say i'm one of the youngest 64 year olds i think you'll ever meet And uh, when you get to be 64, you'll realize it's not old at all. It's just the continuation (laughs) of living life, you know, living on earth, but in eternity at the same time where there is no. But um, I've been uh, doing music ever since I was six years old. I've been playing piano and uh, I did extensive studies. And for years, uh, I have taught piano theory, improvisation, composing. Uh, I have taught uh, piano theory for over five years now. Uh, I do travel. I minister, and I I just released my 24th keyboard album, September, which is also the same month that I've been living in Hawaii for 24 years. So a union of 24, uh, 24th album and 24 years in Hawaii. Um, I was introduced something very unique and i'm the only one in the western hemisphere that i know of that's recording with the software that was introduced to me by david vancouvering uh, a quantum physicist visionary inventor and musicologist who actually created the market for the moog synthesizer and worked with robert moog in the early development of the moog synthesizer and that instrument forever changed the music industry Well, David Vancouvering, um, a number of years ago, was very well known in certain circles. And he would do uh, quantum leap conferences. And, you know, he would speak in terms of a quantum physicist and a scientist and had a unique way of communicating. He was very authoritative, very highly anointed. And when he said something, when he spoke about something, he did it in such a way that you got it. And you received it and you realize this is someone with great authority speaking here and great faith. Well, I sent him a couple of albums in 2008 and in 2009, uh, I remember where I was. It was, a, I believe it was May the 11th at 6.09 in the morning. And we talked for 50 minutes. When I saw his name appear on my cell phone, I was delighted. Here's this man I'd been listening to for like eight months teaching. And I heard him talk about the periodic table of elements frequencies. Mm -hmm. And I heard him talk about this instrument that was created with the periodic table of elements frequencies. This was one of the most far out things I've ever heard of in my life. And so I really desired to work with and have something like that, to have that. And I thought, you know, how in the world will I ever get my hands on something like that? And here the man that was teaching about it and talking about it calls me on the phone, and during our conversation, guess what he says? He says that I was going to be recording with the frequencies of the periodic table of elements. Well, that's like, wow, that's like a dream come true. So the next month, this is June, he comes to Hawaii with his wife because they're en route to Australia. So they stop in Hawaii for a short period of time. They stay in uh, the pastor's home. Uh, of the church that I was attending at the time. He spoke in the church that I was attending at that time, and there were upward of possibly 400 people that came. And we had a great time, and he used what are called lumen disc plasma projectors. I played along with some music that he had playing that he said had the frequencies of the periodic table of elements embedded in them. So uh, it was really interesting. One of the gentlemen that came and put his hands on those lumen discs, because you see, 
the Lumen Disc, L U M uh, L U M I N D I S K, and Lumen Discs can be purchased on Amazon or uh, probably better to look on eBay. They enhance the experience with the periodic table of elements frequencies. One of the gentlemen that was having an intestinal issue for maybe four years was healed, and um, during that meeting. And so uh, that was really, you know, really cool. Uh, I started recording with these frequencies and started to release them in uh, way of albums. Now, I've released nine albums with these frequencies, the periodic table. And I have an uh, ongoing number of testimonies just continuing to come in. And some of them are dramatic healing testimonies. You can read on my website, johntussie.com. And I'm sure Derek is going to... um, uh, put that up on the uh, the broadcast in some way for you. Yeah, we'll uh, have that. In, we'll have that in in the show notes. And so, before we go any further yes. talking about this, mm-hmm. for like mm-hmm. the lay people who don't really understand, or maybe even the the people who are deep who don't understand, right? Talk a yeah. little bit about how you would actually use these in music. So there's different uh, frequencies uh, that are given to. Um, each what, what would you call it um element right that have to to, to deal with um a part of the body the brain like all all of career pretty much all matter is that correct or i mean i know i don't have a full understanding but you you craft these songs like particularly it's almost like a doctor prescription of like the type of notes and frequencies that you would play for someone correct well, not exactly, but I, I do get where you're going. And I have to say not exactly because I don't want to be, well, I won't go there. <laughs> we live in a country where we have to be cautious about how we talk about things like this. I'm sure you understand. I have yeah. to be cautious. For sure. I can't recommend this music for healing. Uh, and, it, you know, I wouldn't anyway because everybody's frequency mix when it comes to minerals that elements make up is different. And what happens for one person may not happen for another person. It might, it might not. So I wouldn't dare recommend this, but I can give testimonies of people being physically healed. Yeah. Before I go any further, I just want to uh, clarify one thing. I will be the first one to tell you that I believe all healing is as a result of the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross. He is the source and the reason for all healing. And I also know that he has different ways of getting it to us. He can get it to us in so many different ways. Now, going back to the periodic table of elements, just remember in 10th or 11th grade when you were taking a chemistry class in high school and you saw the periodic table of elements. Right now, there's 118 of them. Um, Just say that each of those had a tone that you could hear, uh, like oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, zinc, selenium, magnesium, so on and so forth, so on and so forth. So I only record with the element frequencies found in the human body. So, and I did my research. I did a CD specifically to support the circulatory system called Frequencies of the Heart. I did a CD called Frequencies of Thought, specifically to support the brain. And you can imagine how popular that one is. Um, I did one just with oxygen and nature sounds embedded in the music. See, the music, that's another story. I I have to share that as a separate uh, entity. The music is one entity or one element. The periodic table of elements frequencies is another entity. You join them together. You infuse the music with these frequencies. And like I said, imagine oxygen having a tone. The the oxygen tone that I use generally is between 500 and 600 hertz. I could give you the exact number for it, but it's under copyright. And I, I don't feel it would be proper to do that. Sorry. Um. So each of these frequencies has a specific number of hertz. Just like you, you've heard of 60 hertz. That's the number of hertz you hear humming from a fluorescent light. Okay? 
So at the subatomic level, everything is a vibrating frequency. We are literally a walking symphony of sound because all of our cells, our organs, at the subatomic level are singing, humming, frequencies, waves of energy. Isn't that cool? That's the way God did it. When God created the universe, it says, and God said. It doesn't say, and God pointed his finger. It doesn't say, and God thought. It doesn't say in God imagined, it said in God said. That is sound, frequency, and vibration. And so, sound, frequency, and vibration, coming from Genesis chapter 1, is one of the earliest messages in God's Word. Isn't that cool? One of the earliest. It's not weird. It's not strange. It's there in the in the Scripture, which, you know, I love that. So, in order to put people's minds at ease about this, that might think it's uh, strange, that's one of the first things that I like to share, that it's very, very much from God's Word, because He created with sound by speaking. So, you know, waves, sound waves are just, uh, you know, uh, a frequency. Is a sound wave, how many times a sound wave passes a fixed point? So 100 hertz is a frequency of 100 sound waves passing a fixed point in one minute. I'm sorry, in one second. It's how many times a sound wave passes a fixed point in one second. That's what a frequency is. And it's measured in hertz. So I hope that helps and makes some sense. Now, Derek, did I answer your question or did you have, did you want me to uh yeah i think so I, I i do like where you're going and um i mean when when we're talking about you know vibration and sound i think the quote from nikola Te- uh, tesla what is it um uh, if you want to understand the secrets of the universe to think in the terms of energy frequency and vibration and you'll and you will be able to understand it and um the word that is spoken, like you said, is the vibration that it, that that is coming out and everything resonates at that but um so with each one of the uh, uh, tables, you're you're able to how how do you understand the like the uh, note to play um, for that for that element? Okay, so what I do is you see um, I found this uh, this website that was put together by Germans. Well, go figure. They're some of the smartest people in the world, and I was able. In less than a second, you type in a couple of numbers. And then, I don't know if you're familiar with the term sense. 100 cents is a half step on the piano. Like from C to C sharp, that's a half step. That's 100 cents. So in between a half step is where all of these frequencies of the periodic table lie. None of them line up perfectly with the keys on the piano. They're in between. So I have this website that I use to calculate, you know, the frequency that I'm going to use to the closest key on the piano. And then it gives me the difference in sense. <laughs> I retune my synthesizer, fine tune it so that the music is so fine tuned to that frequency. You can't hear a variation. It doesn't sound out of tune. But that frequency is running in the background. It doesn't have to be loud, by the way. It doesn't have to be up. Now, if you get the frequencies of Creation CD, you can hear a lot of the frequencies bleeding through. I allowed that. And um, that one has 36 frequencies, the periodic table of elements embedded in the music. It's called Frequencies of Creation, and you can only get that on CDBaby.com. There is a reason why I would not allow to go on iTunes and Amazon, but I won't get into that right now. Uh, <laughs> has something to do with my Jewish background. But anyway, <laughs> so, um, you know, embedding these frequencies in the music is, is it just as I explained, it's, it's a matter of doing a calculation to get the tuning of the music as close as possible to the frequency of the periodic table that I'm going to embed into it so that the scale of the music that I play is extremely close, extreme. When I say extremely close, I mean 
so close, your ear is not going to be able to pick up any out of tune sound in the music. So that's how it's done. And that's a behind the scenes thing. And uh, I have, you know, recorded with 37 of these periodic table of elements, including silver and gold. One of my albums is cold frequencies of silver and gold. And those frequencies are embedded in that. And I have to tell you a frequency, uh, yeah, a testimony about that, that album. This gal, uh, she bought a couple of my albums, one that's uh, I'm not currently getting printed anymore. It's the Reset to Peace album and the frequencies of silver and gold. And every time she would go to see her ex-husband, she would switch out frequencies of silver and gold with Reset to Peace. So um, he was dealing with cancer. Uh, I don't know how he's doing right now, but she said that the tumor shrunk 90% and the doctor was trying to figure out what happened. And I do know that one of those CDs she was playing in his room 24 seven was frequencies of silver and gold. Now I have not yet received any other testimony like that. I do know that it calms children down that have uh, autism. I do know that for a fact it calms, it calms children down period. It's even been used in schools and I just also, before I go any further, just want everyone to know that I'm very grateful for all of these testimonies, and I give all the glory always to God, because He is the source of every good and perfect gift that comes Amen. down from the Father of lights. He is the one to give all the praise and glory to. So whatever I'm sharing, I thank God for it, and I thank, I thank Him that you know I can be doing something that I love and enjoy so much and get to be so blessed by receiving testimony after testimony from people whose lives are being touched, healed, changed, brought into levels and uh, dimensions of God's presence and glory. And it's just a delight. It's just an honor. It's a privilege. And it's a very humbling to uh, hear and experience these testimonies. So, um, I got off. Uh, yeah, oh, that's as good. I usually that's good. Do, we, uh, we can. We can. Yeah. We're, we're getting, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. we started off very deep <laughs> for a lot of people. <laughs> Maybe not deep, just really intricate. We'll say that. Um, so, yeah. how does this affect someone's body, right? So, if we're playing these type of, uh, of notes and frequencies, obviously, we we hear the the beautiful heavenly higher pitch ones. It makes us feel good. If you play the low chords and like the chords and tones they would use in scary movies and suspense like they play that stuff for a reason how does that affect our body because it's doing something within us and putting us in this weird mood either a good mood it can, music can make us anxious it can make us ready for battle we know that you know in in in, in war back in the day they would send out the you know the, the people with the drums and, and playing the music getting everybody in cadence and stuff like that how does it affect our body and change the way that we feel well first of all the music that i release is very peaceful and uh it's very easy to listen to it's it's beautiful and it's very healing in its sound and that's the kind of music that naturally has been flowing out of my spirit for a long time so that's the ambiance the, the sound the mood the uh you know, what you would experience while listening to the music. The frequencies themselves are just individual tones that are embedded in there. Some of them are low, and some of them are mid-range. Some of them are between low and mid-range. Some are between mid-range and high. Some are high. They span quite a, uh, a spectrum of uh, frequencies. But the music itself... Uh, as you said, is what uh, affects people's spirit, their soul, their mood. Uh, and this music is like taking a massage from the inside out. People find it very easy and sometimes will we'll report of getting the best sleep ever. I've even had people, uh, you know, listening to the, the periodic table of elements, frequencies, music, express being energized. Uh, I personally experience a deep, deep relaxation. And um, it's, uh, 
it's a wonderful experience. I, I've been exposed to these frequencies for years. And uh, I think it, it's a very, very good thing. Um, I could give you a number of testimonies. As far as what happens to people's bodies, that is hard to predict. Because let's just take, for example, one person, their level of magnesium, potassium, zinc, calcium, uh, phosphorus, these are all elements that I record with. Just say that person's levels are, you know, they're all different, right? And then you take somebody else, and that person's set of those elements are all different. And I think just about everybody, you're going to find some variations. So I believe that's one of the reasons why you can't predict what's going to happen. Another thing, some people are more sensitive than other people. And some people will engage deeply with what's happening. And even if you don't feel anything, I know that the frequencies are going in because on YouTube, there's a 13 minute, 26 second testimonies video. And the Lord gave me two prophetic downloads that I was very excited to receive because after recording with these frequencies for close to three years, I felt like my former pastor had more revelation about it than I did. But one day, I got a suddenly download, and, you know, you just can't make up this kind of stuff. You'll read both of these prophetic downloads on that 13-minute, 26-second video, which I hope that your listeners will take the time to go to. Shortly after the video starts, you'll see typed out on screen this word, and the word begins with a sentence that goes something like this. Uh, the music that you record cleanses the DNA at the subatomic level. Now, like I said, Derek, you can't make that kind of stuff up. I wasn't even thinking. This was a time of praise and worship. It was during uh, the last session of a Paul Cox conference, and I've played for several of his meetings in Hawaii. And so all of a sudden, this is very unusual for me to be getting a prophetic download during a time of noise, praise and worship. In other yeah. words, I usually get my downloads in, in quiet times. But this was very different, and I knew I was getting something, so I sat down. It was like 7.18 in the evening on January the 26th, 2014. I sat down, and I wrote down what I got. And then I, I emailed it to several men of God, and not one of them wrote back to me and said that they, they felt it was wrong. I had all positive response just by you know bouncing it off of them. Then the second word came on February the 10th, and that can, that goes in tandem with the first word. That second word is typed out on screen after the last testimony on that 13-minute, 26-second video on YouTube. So um, I believe that when people read those words, that they will be able to receive deeper as they listen to the music. Because David Van Coovering, in conjunction with that one, that first word, had an experience the twelfth time his heart shut off, where he went, he passed over, and he went into the heavenly realm. He heard sounds, he saw colors. His life was forever changed. When he came back into his body and went into an auditorium, where an instrument was being played with these same frequencies that I record with, plus more, because that instrument was playing. Uh, the, the gentleman that was playing that instrument probably. Uh, with combinations was playing all 103 of the elements that are included in the software. But David Vancouvering said the way it was being played, the way these frequencies were coming out, he said, I began to weep because those were the sounds I heard in heaven. Wow. So among those sounds he heard in heaven, I'm recording with them. Yeah. And that just, that just I'm is getting, like, wow. get, yeah, I, just, I've, Man, I'm getting some revelation as you say that because, like, I've just been on this download myself. Is that like this, like, sound and, and part of what we're talking about is the word of God, like the sound, like this, this is constant. It, it it's going to do what it's set forth to do. He sent forth His word to heal them. Right? It it, it changes not. 
when you when you play these notes, there are s- complex geometric patterns that form, and they w- with with the vibration that can be seen in water, can be seen in sand and salt and things like that. If you if you have it on a, uh, on a surface that's vibrating, complex sacred geometric patterns, and many people in those near death experiences or when they cross over, they talk about the colors, they talk about the sounds. And they talk about these shapes that they're seeing, cogs and things that are turning and all of this stuff. And I'm like, that's the that's the sacred geometry. They're able to see the sounds. See, that's the, that's the thing that we're not used to. We're used to hearing sound, right? But mm-hmm. now with all of this technology now, you, you can see it. That you can you, There's DIY things that you can make to what they, it's called cymatics and being exactly. able to, to take the vibration, see what picture yeah. it makes and any of these beautiful healing, lofty sounding uh, tones are going to be beautiful, complex, sacred geometry uh, symbols and all of the, the, the really harsh ones, the lower frequencies, maybe even the symbols and crashes and things like that are going to almost like like, do like a have a shocking effect to the uh, to the body and to the mind as well. Um, are you familiar? Uh, I know you, you're a student of this. Do you, are you familiar with the work of Pythagoras at all? And some of the things oh, that yes. they believed. Yes. And so some of the stuff that they believed when, when re- regarding music, they didn't want to be around symbols at all. Like they wouldn't allow symbols and, and any like crashes because what it does to the body they were really uh strict against that but throwing in the, the you know the pythagoras stuff a little bit and i, I interviewed a, a guy named um um what was his name uh eric dollard who was a physicist and really big into electricity and things like that and studying sound and um he wasn't a christian but he's breaking all of this stuff in a scientific method and he's like proving the spirituality behind this stuff and he doesn't even know it he's saying it from yeah. a scientific method yeah. but he was talking about pythagoras and uh and, and kind of it kind of ties in a little bit what what you were saying because sometimes people will hear the same tone but it's a they're affected differently or maybe even on a different day because of the placement yeah. of the planets and the earth and the sun and the conjunction to where everything was in the church of the of, of the day of the 1500s 1800s they understood this and they knew when to tap in and when the sun w- w- you know during the equinox i mean there's monuments all over the earth that are set up to uh capture sound and reverberate it back and forth and even when you're in the middle of it to almost create a vortex so the person can have an encounter with the divine and all of these ancient churches, the churches with the organs and the pipes were set up so that the sound could travel throughout throughout the building. And the people literally would have an encounter with God. Those churches were set up like Eric Dollard says, almost like a transformer that's outside conducting energy with the music, the sound and the music, letting these people encounter God through the music. And it sounds very similar to what you're doing and what you're tapping into and you understand it. Derek, I have something very interesting with you about Pythagoras. Now, tuning is one thing. Temperament is another. Temperament speaks of the distance between the tones in a scale. Tuning, for instance, temperament, a well temperament, okay, um, um, let me see. What's it called? Well temperament, well tempered. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it might be something else, but there is a temperament where I'm sorry. It's called equal temperament. I'm thinking of the well tempered clavier by Johann Seb- Sebastian Bach. That's exactly. that's a, a yeah. work that he wrote. Um, equal temperament means you take a C scale and then all the the tones have equal space between them sound wise frequency wise pythagoras temperament it was not equal temperament there was not equal space in between the notes of a scale now if you take 432 hertz tuning in pythagorean temperament all the tones are are whole numbers whole numbers isn't that amazing 
You look at any other tuning, you've got two numbers past the decimal point on all of them. But with uh, 432 hertz now, it has to be 432 hertz tuning, in Pythagorean temperament, they're all whole numbers. I find that very, very fascinating. And 432 hertz is known to be in nature. Uh, there's, I found some fascinating information about 432 hertz on the internet. Uh, there, there's something called the solfeggio frequencies. I don't know if you've ever heard of yeah. them. Almost everything you read about the solfeggio frequencies on the internet is incorrect, false, or unprovable. Most people don't know that. But it's false, unprovable, or incorrect information that has been repeated over and over and over and over and over. And almost everything you read about it on the Internet is the same thing. And it's amazing how that type of information can be repeated. And then people believe it. There are even some Christian teachers that are teaching it, and they're completely off the wall. Forgive me. So I, w- would, uh-huh. you, would you include the 528? frequency with with by, by solfeggio? is a part of what are called the so the solfeggio even the name solfeggio doesn't even apply these are the six so-called solfeggio frequency 396 417 528 639 741 and 852 there are three other ones but you know i'm going to lay everything aside that i just said about them i do believe that they are value. I mean, excuse me, I do believe that they are valid tones. I have recorded two CDs called Solfeggio Frequencies and Solfeggio Frequencies 2 Crystal Blue Renaissance that are embedded with these tones. And also, the last song on each uh, of those CDs is recorded at 444 hertz, which includes 528.1 hertz as the C above middle C. Mm -hmm. Now, I do believe, now, you can find information on the internet that blows all, just about everything you read about these solfeggio frequencies completely to pieces. And if it's not true, I believe in blowing it to pieces. I believe in doing it in love, but I believe in correcting what has been, what has been falsely taught to the body of Christ. So that's one of the things that I'm doing now. And I'm, I'll do it in a good way. I'll but do you it believe in, nice in sticking way. with the 432, though, instead, right? No. No? No. I, I have recorded three CDs in 444 hertz. Serenity 444, Flowing 444, and Piano Embrace 444. My Majestic Journey CD is recorded at 432 hertz. But it's not with the Pythagorean a temperament. It's an equal temperament. Now, the, if you record music at the Pythagorean temperament, there are certain chords that you're going to play that our Western ear just can't deal with because it sounds out of tune to us. We just can't deal with it. Um, the fourths and the fifths are going to be in tune, but the thirds and the sixths are not necessarily. And so when you play a chord, it's, you, you know, you don't want to play music and release it to the public. And, and uh, you know, most people that are listening to this would say that sounds out of tune. You know, you don't want that to happen. So I didn't use the Pythagorean temperament with Majestic Journey. I used the what's called equal temperament. But nonetheless, it is tuned to 432. Regarding 444, there are some people that are convinced that that's the tuning that King David used. Well, there's yeah, no way. Key of there's David no way he could have known. Yeah. There's yeah. no way. That there's nothing no else way. that really, really proves it, right? It's just no. the key. Do you, you don't even no. think that he was even when when it's mentioned? Do you think he's talking? I know it would be cool, but do you think he's really talking about an, a note when it talks about the key of David in the scriptures? I don't know, but you know, Derek, this is what I tell people: if four forty four hertz is the tuning that David used, I'm all for it. I think it's great. I'll celebrate it along with everybody else. But until I can irrefutably, undeniably you prove it, teach I can't it teach it. it for sure. You that's, can't teach something that you yeah. can. When you are teaching about sound, frequency, and vibration, you really, really have to come from, an, uh, from a place of having something to back it up. 
you know, just like anything else, you can't just take what you see on the Internet and not do research on it, repeat it, and feel as though you're presenting the truth, <laughs> which some of and that's where I believe it's important to expose what isn't correct. You know, I don't, I don't want to dwell on that uh, on this uh, p- podcast, but that's sure. just one of the things that what a, you know I wanted to talk about. But I, I, I in, in yeah, my music heart, and, I, I like to. I mean, I think all of it's powerful, right? And I think all of it has us in its its uh, its um, reason you know, for use and things like that. Um, are you, are you familiar with the, um, and this is, this is actually what, what happened in Mobile, the Gulf oil spill. Do you know about this story using the, five, the 528, uh, uh, frequency, which they were calling it, you know what I'm saying? The, the, uh, love tone or the miracle tone. And with the oil spill, they, they did the studies in Canada. It was, um, uh, John, uh, Hutchinson, uh, exactly with the, uh, from, from Canada. Um, they was able to, to separate the oil and and clean the water from the oil spill supposedly by playing that 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 tone the the 528 and and it was documented they got all of these major websites you know vouching for it and stuff like that have you done any research on that with the 528 though you know something derek uh one of the messages that i bring in the conferences that i do is called sound frequency and vibration and that's the last story in, in my message. <laughs> I read it and I show the people the documentation, the one sheet of documentation that, that, they, uh, that they have prove what they did. And uh, I find that's fascinating. That's why I can say, that's one of the reasons why I can say, I believe that those so-called sulfur frequencies, like I said, that I've recorded with are valid tones. What I don't like is all of the misinformation and false information that's been taught about them. Now, it is thought that they're derived from the Marco Roden number families. You can look that up on the Internet. M-A-R-K-O-R-O dot D-I-N. Marco Roden, R-O-D-I-N, number families. It's supposed... Some people believe that these so-called solfeggio frequencies were derived from that. Now, there is a story about a particular gentleman that had an experience where he found these solfeggio frequencies in numbers. I believe it was chapter 7, verses 12 through 78. Wow. And by using the Pythagorean number system where you distill Whatever number you have, no matter how many numbers, digits are in a number, like if it's 578, you keep adding them together until they equal a single digit between one and zero. And um, so, well, actually one and nine. And so that's the Pythagorean method of distilling numbers. But this method was used to find these tones in the book of Numbers, chapter 7, verses 12 through 78, I believe. And uh, this gentleman, I'm not going to name him, you know, um, I believe he had a visitation from an angel, as I I remember. Um, I do believe in visitations from angels. I'm very, very much, we are supernatural. I mean, that's our natural. However, however, In certain circumstances and situations, we have sometimes uh, a question, a question about it. And that's proper. We should question. For sure. If we have a question or something might seem a little off, we need to question it. Absolutely. So I have not read the book that this information is shared in, but... um, like I said, most of the information about the solfeggio frequencies that I've seen, yeah. if not all of it, is either unprovable, false, or incorrect. Those six tones are not a part of one scale. They could have never been used in the hymn to John the Baptist. And during the time that the hymn of John the Baptist was written, they didn't have the instrumentation 
to measure frequencies. So how can it be taught that those frequencies were used to sing that hymn? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but like I said, I, I prefer to, um, to dwell more on positive and uplifting things. Uh, so I don't want to spend, uh, you know, a, a lot of time on We're trying on to figure that, this but. stuff out, man. Just point us in the right direction. So, um, but that's the powerful thing, even with the water and even with that study saying that it was able to, to, oh, clean, yeah. to clean the water. Um, yeah. and, you're, and you're talking about repairing the DNA, fixing the DNA. Um, our bodies are made up of like 70% water, right? And then yeah. uh, we, we've actually done, my family has done the Dr. Emoto Rice experiment. You know, have, do you know what that is too? Right? Oh, so yes. You're, so it's not You've done only. That, huh? Yeah, we did it. So it's not only just the music. It, there's something about the intention of the sound that's carrying. And then so we had a couple of questions in the chat. People want to know, and I definitely want to tie into this, the intention. So if, so even with the, 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 the rice experiment with the water, we're speaking blessings to one uh, container of water and the other container we're, we're cursing it. We're saying, I hate you. You're stupid. I wish you weren't born. You're never going to be anything every morning for, for one month we did this. And uh, the, so we, we started doing it and the one that we were cursing started to kind of turn brown and then green and then mold and it got really disgusting after a month but the one that we were blessing saying i love you you're awesome god has great things in store for you you keep you know we just blessing it every day and uh and i, I started seeing the the effects that w it was taking so much so that halfway through i didn't even want to curse it anymore like i didn't even want to you know even i knew it was an experiment i didn't want to let that out of me and, and say it you know i knew the effects of me just putting it into the atmosphere and the word the word is forever and we go back to the scripture the scripture says you're going to give an account of every word every sound every vibration that comes out and we just see how this stuff ties in and then our body is made up of water and so if there's affirmations or repeating the word of god over ourselves right so it, it's it's the music but it's the spoken word as well and we have the written word as well but what about the intention because when we're speaking, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm formulating sentences and, and there's a vibration and there's an, a thought and an intention and it's connecting and I'm pushing it out with the vibration. I hate you. You're stupid. I wish you weren't here. I love you. And it's creating something's happening. But the same thing happens when you play the, the music as well. A guitar player or a piano is you have an intention. I'm writing this so that people will go deeper in their encounter with God, I'm doing the math on the back end to see how it relates to their body, how it's going to relax them and then allow for them to have an encounter, maybe, you know, a, a, a song of repentance, whatever it is. And as you're writing that, it's embodied in in the recording and it's in, and it's experienced at a home meeting or, or at, a, at a church service. Right. How does that work when we're able to tie the intention into the music and push it through the music as well. Hollywood's got it down. They're doing it. How do, how do we do it and, and, and use it for how it was, it was really created? The intention is just as important as the frequencies. The intention, you know, what's coming out of your heart um, when you're recording, you know, when you're recording, just flowing with Holy Spirit, just allowing Holy Spirit to flow through and being uh, enveloped in the Holy Spirit and just moving in God's presence during the recording. That is very, very, very important. David Vancouvering once shared something that I felt was profound. He said, and this is so true, if a recording is anointed at the time it's being recorded. In other words, the music, while it's being recorded, there's an anointing on that. There's an anointing on the instrumentalists and the vocalists. Every time you play it back, he shows up live. It's a live experience with God every time it's played back. It's not a recorded one. Because he said the bandwidth of the anointing was so high, you couldn't capture it in a recording. So it's a live experience with God every time you play back. 
and anointed at the time it was recorded recording. Isn't that cool? And speaking of water, I have been watching some YouTube videos, again, with some Germans, very smart people. Something very profound. And as you said, we're made up of at least 70% water. Well, they did some experiments. They put a couple of different flowers in some water. And then they took a drop of that water. And the image of that flower was in the drop of water. Now, the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they had shown, uh, you know, they, right? So when we, we are programming that speech into ourselves, we can command our body to line up with God's word with authority and faith, and it will. It just will happen because of our faith embedded into the word that we speak. And, you know, considering again that our body is made up of at least 70% water, what we speak is being recorded into ourselves, into that water that's in our body. And it's going to manifest outwardly. That's why it's so important to speak words of life, words of healing, words of encouragement, words of hope, words of strength over our own lives as well as everyone we come in contact with. I mean, everybody slips up here and there, and we can repent, and we can get our bloodline cleansed, our DNA cleansed, and our cellular memory cleansed. We can go through that, and it doesn't take long to do that. It doesn't have to be a long, prolonged, complicated process. Um, and, you know, I realize some things do take some time to achieve, but um, I don't believe God wants us to get into prolonged, complicated processes to get things accomplished. I believe that he can, he can uh, enable us to take care of things in a timely manner. Oh, yeah. And, uh, in, yeah. In, in the, uh, <laughs> and the duration yeah. of a song, even. <laughs> yeah, that's right. By the end of the song, you know, you've yeah. experienced a renewal. Yeah. yeah, you know, he's so good at doing things very quickly, very beautifully. Yeah. And things, uh, things, things that we've took years to create and get into in an instant, God can, eh, you know, it's done. Yeah. I closed that door yeah. for you instantly yeah. we think because it's it took us years to get into it we think it's going to take years to make it right or years to manifest it your dreams and your visions yeah. that god has given you given you it's going to take 10 years for me to work this out three years and then instantly he opens up doors he sends that person whatever man just working with him man he's he's so awesome how he does that he is he is awesome and um thank god for his tender loving kindness his mercies that are new every morning and for the, the grace that he gives and, and the, the love that he works with in our lives. He's wonderful and beautiful. And uh, he just shows himself in so many wonderful ways. And, you know, we live in time and eternity at the same time. We're seated with Christ in the heavenly places. At the same time, we're sitting here, myself, in a hotel room and you in your home. But there's a part of us that's seated with Christ in the heavenly places. So we're really more than one place at the same time. And, you know, that's just the way it is. That's our, our normal. The supernatural is our natural. Yeah. And uh, I, I believe in this day that we live in, God is, is really helping us to grasp easier and easier, more and more, of who we are in Him, who we, who we have been made in Him, who He is in us, and what we have in him. Things that we've been reading for many years and pr probably confessing over our lives are going to take on a new dimension, a new reality, a deeper meaning. And um, you know how it is when revelation comes. Everything changes. Just like that song that Kathy Tricoli sang, Everything Changes. <laughs> <laughs> everything you that changes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love that song. Yeah. Well, you know, everything changes when revelation comes from that point on. Wow. 
We are yeah. changing. In an instant, man. Yeah. In an instant. You know, I've, there's been so many times that I've got into just in my, my, my process of studying and getting into things that maybe I shouldn't have got into. And then I've been told to, like, just chew up the meat, spit out the bones. I was like, okay. But then, like, some of the other stuff gets in, too. And it's like, oh, man, this isn't good. And I think that I'm going to be this way forever. Like I'm going to view God or view the church this way, you know, and I, and I, I can feel it. I know it's there. It's foreign. It's a foreign belief that's not of God. And, I, and it's every time I look at, you know, churches, I see this and I get before my brothers and we get in some prayer and worship and I just confess it to them in tears. And in an instant, God pulls it off of me. And it's, like, oh, it's, it's done. I'm like, wow. This burden Hallelujah. is lifted, a heaviness. I didn't. I thought that I was going to have to like get accustomed to this burden, but he just wow. takes it off of us in an instant. You know, yeah, he does. That's just the power He's of wonderful. worship, man. Getting getting in that music, and uh, it's something yes. about the music. And it's interesting because the music itself has has power, right? Just and it's a gift from God, right? It's uh, really, you know, it, again, it could be a part of the word of God and language, even sound and tones and uh, just vibration in general. But um, but it's something when a psalmist understands the music and sends that intention. There's people who get behind the, the guitar, they get behind the, the keyboard and they just begin to, to play. And as soon as they hit two or three notes, the spirit of God is just in the room. And it's just like his weighty presence is there uh, just for them playing. And there's, I, I've, I've been in the presence of it, it's n- not a lot of people, but a handful of people. When they hit those first couple notes, it's over. Like God is just mm-hmm. there moving and and uh, and creating a beautiful atmosphere of worship and of healing and of all of that stuff with music as well. Um, and all of this is deep. Every single bit of it of, of God just, you know, fixing your bad theology in, in the midst of worship, you know, God healing your disease in the midst of worship. You know, all of this is beautiful uh, and, and deep and intricate in and of itself. We have a question here. This is a little bit deep, and I think we can probably uh, fit it in in a biblical perspective, maybe, or a scientific perspective. But my friend Christy Folks wants to know, does music, sound, and frequencies have the ability to open up portals to other realms and dimensions? You know, that's a good question. Um, I believe when the Spirit of God is flowing through it, yes. Yes. By itself, uh, there has to be, well, I'll put it a different way. You see, music can be infused with whatever spirit is behind that music. If it's a Holy Spirit, then you are going to experience something powerful in the spirit realm. And that's God's will. You know, David, King David, played the harp and saw was delivered from demons. Uh, A psalmist was called, and Elisha prophesied. The presence of God came. Isn't it interesting that he called for a psalmist, and then the hand of the Lord came upon him to prophesy. On the dark side, and, you know, I can go on certain websites, and within a few seconds, I can pick up the wrong spirit that's behind the music. The music itself might sound beautiful, but the spirit behind it is really bad and evil. I can pick that up. You see, it all depends on the spirit behind the music as to where you are taken when you're listening. Yeah. And, you know, speaking about music, uh, Derek, uh, you know, when you feel it would be a, a good time for me to share this. I would like to share how I received the music that I record. For sure. Okay, would now be a good time to go into that? Yeah, we can definitely, definitely go into it. Okay. See, I'm really grateful for this because, again, it all goes back to giving God glory for what he gives us. I've had three encounters where I have received CD downloads from heaven. The first time was... On February the 28th, 2009, I was in the last session of a Patricia King Glory School, and we had ascended into the heavenlies. 
during that time, I had my hands raised. And while I had my hands raised, I saw myself, I saw myself playing like a long, shiny black concert grand piano, ten, nine or 10 feet long on a white cloud, sitting in front of this piano, swaying back and forth in kind of a fluidy type of a spirit form, not physical, but more spiritual form. And while I'm watching this, my right hand began to tingle with that feeling, that electrical feeling that I've had so many times. And Jesus placed a CD in my right hand. So I put my right hand over my heart. So I put my hands up again. And I knew they were numbered 1 to 25, but I couldn't see the numbers, but I knew that they were numbered just by knowing in the Spirit. But they came so fast into my right hand, couldn't see the numbers. So now I've got 25 plus 1 is 26. I put my right hand over my heart after I received those 25. That same year, I went to Media, Pennsylvania during a visit with my parents in New Jersey. I have very good friends in Media, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania that have a production company, Christian, which is a prayer general. These are dear friends, and they're very, very, very on that. And they're moving, you know, with, uh, they're, they're keeping up to date with what God's doing. So I stood outside with the two of them to pray before I left to go back to New Jersey. This is in Media, Pennsylvania. Notice the word media. And so uh, my friend Butch, he has this large video truck parked in his driveway. So we're standing very close to the video truck, the three of us holding hands, praying. And while we're praying, I saw 50 CDs drop down through the top of my head. So now I have 50 plus 26. I have 76 CD downloads from heaven. Two years later, I'm visiting again in New Jersey, and I go over to visit with Butch and Enos Stockton. And Butch is going to film me for a uh, TV show that usually his wife does uh, in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. And uh, so she gave that half hour to me to share. So I shared uh, just solo and, you know, shared what I did. And Before Butch began filming that episode of his uh, TV show, I was standing close to the desk where I would be sitting to do this interview, a self-interview, actually, <laughs> And I had a deep knowing, I had a knowing inside that I had received 100 more CD downloads. I didn't see them this time, I just had a knowing. And as I remember, I believe Butch confirmed the number 100. Now I have 176 CD downloads from heaven, so I know where the music comes from. And my friend Gary Beaton, who's a very accurate prophetic voice in the body of Christ, I became friends with in 2014. He said it's like unzipping a zip file. When I record, it's usually spontaneous outflow while the music is being recorded. So it's like unzipping a zip file, and the music is flowing from the spirit through me into the keys and then into the computer, and it's being recorded. And uh, that's a very good analogy, I thought, of... uh, expressing what actually happens when I'm recording this music. And again, I just thank God. It's just, uh, it's profound. This new CD that I recorded and released, which I believe is my next level in spiritual music, I call it spiritual music, not Christian music, (laughs) because it is spiritual music. It comes out of the spirit realm. Um, um, And I, I believe that that's the correct term. It's called Heavenly Soundscapes. That's the new one. And I really just, it it was, I had this image of the Lord like dropping a drop of liquid from heaven. And when it came into the realm where I am, it just opened up and there was the whole track. You know, when I listened back to this music, you know, during um, final mixing and so on and so forth, I do my own recording, editing and mixing. (laughs) It was just like, wow. You know, it's just like, wow. You know, it's just like. It, it can be amazing, you know, the way everything just came together. And, and, and here it is. Here it is in a finished form. And uh, it's really co-partnering with Jesus, laboring with him to release this music into the earth. It really is amazing, and it is a spiritual thing. I mean, yeah, we're playing and recording, and, and we're working with the computer to do the, the, 
the things in the natural realm. But I'm telling you, there is such a spiritual element going yeah. on here. And I just thank God, you know, and my heart is to release music that's very deep, that reaches very deep into the hearts and spirits of people and brings about great depth of uh, help, of experience from heaven. Yeah, yeah. And there's the Lord, there, there, there's yeah. music and, and things and tones and all that kind of stuff. It unlocks creativity in other people. They oh, yes. hear it and they're suddenly inspired to yeah. sing their song, to yes. work on their project and all of that stuff, you know? Yeah, definitely. In fact, you mentioning that during conferences that I give, uh, one of my keynote messages is called Discovering the Creative Genius of God in You. And I use three scriptures to build a spiritual, a good spiritual stronghold from which I believe they, people, the people can see it's hidden in plain sight. Everybody has the creative genius of God in them, but most people don't realize it, but it's there. Now, when you're talking about intellectual genius, that's a different kind of genius. But because we have the mind of Christ and we're one spirit with the Lord, in addition to the fact that we're made in the image of God, and those are the three scriptures that I give to build this, I believe that intellectual genius can be tapped into. I believe that anybody, especially, I'll say any Christian, can tap into, you know, the knowledge and the wisdom of Christ that is available 24-7. And we have access. And I believe that anybody can tap into intellectual genius, but they already have creative genius in them. And they don't have to try. I mean, it's already there. There's, intellectual there's, genius mm -hmm. there's something to it and I've, I've you know this is kind of new a couple maybe a year just the understanding of like w you know we're made in, a, in the image and likeness of a creator god he's a creator yes. that's what he does and we're made in that image and likeness and so um it's a it's a it's an expression of worship it's an expression of what we were created to do when we create something whether it's that song and it's it's interesting you say that you're kind of like you're involved in it you you record it mix it master it because if anybody gets in there and taints it and messes it up you're like wait this is the vision that i had and this is i'm gonna see it through and produce it and this didn't exist in the universe until I brought it forth. And it's like it's 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 a, a form of worship to the father and uh, just the ingenuity. And and, uh, and and you know how we like to show people, hey, look what I created. Look at these songs. Look at these albums. And people listen to them and they're like, oh, I just love it. It's just it, it reminds me of you or it reminds me of God. And then just this revelation of God, just like us looking at the mountains and God's like, look what I made. Look what I painted. Look what I created. You know, does it, re you know what I'm saying, remind you of me? I'm in it all. I've created all of this, the clouds, the sky, for you to experience. And so that relationship and how it like mirrors the Father's heart as, as being creators, man, and, and being over music, because I'm the same way with my music. Like I, I, I do my vocals and mixing and the singing and all that stuff. And, um, and people who are supposedly really good at it, like better than me, I'll send my stuff to them and I, I never like what I get back. I never like it. Like I have this, this, what I, what I'm trying to get across the sound and to create this and birth it. And you want it to come out a certain way. Cause it's once it's mastered and sent off and sent to the companies and it's done. So it's like, I want to be a part of the process and see it through ver versus you giving it to somebody. And it's like, Hey, this isn't what I made, you know? So it's like your baby, you know? <laughs> It is. You know, I do the uh, recording, editing, and mixing. I have a very good mastering engineer. I've used, I think, four mastering engineers. Uh, there's one that I've used uh, for most of the albums, and he always does a really good job, and I'm thankful for that. When I when I send um, my, my stuff to be mastered to people, I'll put a lot of... So in my music, I'll put a lot of whispering in the background, and I'll pan it. Though I'll whisper some of my words, and then there's layers, and then there's echoes of the whisper, and it's an ambiance. You know, it's going back and forth. And every time I yeah. send it off to be mastered, all of the echoes and stuff are always 
like brought up to the main they just put a compression on it you don't have no problems uh, like that with your your effects and ambiance and stuff like that you know um not really <laughs> no i believe if you listen to the unmastered track and the mastered track uh you would you know the mastered track is generally going to be louder punchy uh but um i don't find if anything has been missing it's been not something that happens often it's it's just really not you know um there's clarity and and a really really good sound that comes out and I, i'm really thankful so um i've learned see i use a software synth called omnisphere 2 okay which it which is um it's it's been used in many movies and tv yeah. shows it's it's pretty amazing but what i've learned is if you if you jack the volume up too high on some of the patches in omnisphere it brings noises to the surface that you don't want in your music yeah so i usually have my stuff mastered at minus two or minus three db to leave headroom mm -hmm. i don't want my mastering jacked up to zero db i don't want that not for what i do i want headroom yeah so i hope that yeah oh yeah gives you um, are you um are you using contact at all um with um what are some of the um there's some of those pl the plugins i just found them all contact. oh yes the el what yes, is it uh, use, uh, voices of the elves and all those different um plugins that they have that's like very celtic sounding and the the, the have you messed with the the uh there's packs and plugins that you can get that are, are of like of a, a woman singing and it almost sounds like it's angelic with her voice and you can pl you can play that have you messed with that at all I use um, I use female oohs and ahs and boys choirs. Yeah, I I embed especially the female oohs and ahs. Uh, if you listen to some of my samples, uh, you'll hear it in a lot of the music. It creates a very heavenly ambiance. Uh, there are several companies that make sound libraries that you have to have contact in order to use. Yeah, right. So I have Albion One. Um, I have, um, from a company called, um, Spitfire makes some really good things. I have their London orchestra, London contemporary orchestra textures, which I used on heavenly soundscapes. I used an amazing voice choir on, um, uh, at least one of the tracks on heavenly soundscapes. I mean, that, that voice choir is amazing. And I can't remember the name of that library. But um, let me see. I have. Um, wow. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not the best. I can just do some yeah. basic chords. But um, okay. I'll, I'll, I won't I'll, hold that against you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can. Hold, I can do three three chords and just play it over and just layer it. But here's. But but the plugin sounds so good. I'm gonna play a little bit of it for you, right quick. Can you hear that? Oh yeah. The eyes. Yeah. And then adding it with no. the synths and the keys and stuff. Yeah. I'm just like That's each, really cool, Derek. Each one of those notes you can do with the oohs and the ahs and their syllables I'm just that she says. Which story are you using there for the fee name of um, there's a couple that I'm using. Um, Voices of the Elves is a big one. It's called Voices of the Elves. What company makes that? Mm, it's one of the big ones. I haven't messed with it in so long. It's one of the big ones okay. who makes a lot of the ones for contact. Let me see. Okay. There's a. Okay, that sounds really, really cool. Yeah, it, Very you should good. check it out. Yeah. You know, uh, I'll tell you what. Shivani um, or something like that. Omnisphere. Sh Shivani I. Okay. Omnisphere uh, has some really, really good female oohs and ahs. Uh, they, have, um, they have a multi, uh, what's it called? It's called Enya-esque. It's a multi. <laughs> and I've used that, I don't know how many yeah. times. Uh, you know, we have our favorites. 
And I like joining several pads together with maybe some strings and female, uh, you know, ahs or oohs. I like using a variety of different sounds in my recordings so that, you know, it doesn't sound all the same. Um, I love recording just solo piano and piano and strings or piano and pad. Um, you know, um, strings and, and uh, female oohs and ahs can be very pleasant too. There's just so many uh, combinations of sounds you can use. And uh, I also like, you know, having an ethereal type soundscape with some piano going on in there. You yeah, know, and I, I did that. Just mm-hmm. adding it, adding it to anything. They just, they just to uh, you know, just that that soft ambiance, even an acoustic guitar by itself, and then just following it with that synth is just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's uh, it's a joy, you know, to to record his music. It's it's just a joy. Beautiful. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, you just come out with a new project as well, and um, you can let the people know where to check that out. We, we'll have the links in the description, but the new the new album is Heavenly Soundscapes. And so it is. We, we're talking about you know opening those portals, but I, I know you, you said that there was a type of music that you're working on now that helps people for with ascension, like with the intent of having an encounter with the Father, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, and seeing where that takes you. I like to be spontaneous. I like, yeah. okay, Lord, what do you want to show me? And he has the ability to open up portals, and he uses the sound, and he uses those kind of things. But uh, yeah, talk a little bit about the new album and just how that's just creating an atmosphere of the supernatural even, you know? Yeah. Uh, I just really feel so blessed and so good about this new album. It's it's kind of like my new favorite. Um, it is called Heavenly Soundscapes. And uh, it's, you know, some of the music is very ethereal. It's very uh, soothing. It's, um, I don't know if the word mystical probably could apply, you know, to the sound of it. Uh, There are sound samples. It's best to listen to sound samples because sometimes words are not sufficient for describing the sound of a, of a song (laughs) or what it brings. Uh, A lot of music evokes emotions that are challenging to put into words sometimes. So if they go to cdbaby.com and type in my first and last name in the, in the uh, search box, J-O-H-N-T-U-S-S-E-Y, they can find, uh, I have released 24 albums. Uh, They can find, I think, 23 of them there. My first one, Free Flow, is out of print, has been out of print. It's more than 23 years old, Free Flow. But um, you can find 23 albums there. And uh, they can all be downloaded as digital downloads. I also have 22 albums on iTunes. I have done collaborations with uh, a young prophetic pastor and minister named Ben Lim. Uh, They are um, glory impartations and heavenly decrees. Those are also available on iTunes and Amazon. but, you know, I really in- encourage the people to check out the sound samples just to get a taste of what the music is like. And um, hopefully they will, you know, really enjoy it and want to have it playing 24-7, perhaps when they go to sleep. It's a, it's a really, really good thing to do. And uh, I call it, you know, the the, uh, periodic table of elements frequencies that I was sharing towards the beginning of the show. I explain it as frequency cellular infusion because the Lord showed me that these frequencies are going into the cells regardless if a person feels anything happening or not. I will refer the listener to L-A-I. Eunice Lay, she experienced a very powerful healing, and she experienced different physical sensations while listening to one of the periodic table of elements frequencies, CDs, in a soaking meeting. 
I was there, but I didn't know she'd been healed until after the meeting, sometime afterwards. You'll hear all about it. It's an eight-minute video. Then there's another video, maybe two and a half minutes. This gentleman from England experienced a dramatic healing in his back, another back healing, by soaking in these two albums, Frequencies of the Heart and Frequencies of Thought. And, you know, those are testimonies I don't want to go into elaborating on those because they are videos that, that can be watched and enjoyed. But, um, you know, getting back to Heavenly Soundscapes, I just encourage the people to listen to the samples and and just see how it affects you and see what you think about it. Uh, I'm personally very, very delighted in how it turned out. And I have been receiving testimonies, just people expressing you know, love with capital letters. They they like it so much. They put sometimes love, 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 or I love it, you know, and it's so strong emotion tied to the expression of how they're experiencing the music. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, what, is, what has been your experience with like now this, now we can have this conversation as believers. <laughs> like a lot of this stuff we've had to kind of, I don't know about leave to the new age or to the mystical and things like that. But now we can, we're like taking this stuff back. This stuff that the science is like proving the spirituality of the Bible. Even I like to say like we can, like there's a lot of Christians who are into vibration, sound, cymatics. And this is a, you know, uh, you know, uh, just a couple of years ago, we would have been sounding like crazy people. I don't know. And you've been doing this for a while. I don't know if you've ever, you know, ha got into those places where you're leading people in or you're just playing, I mean, and, and getting funny looks or whatever. Or like, have you noticed the shift, though, of like people who are into this, like in, who are in the body of Christ? Well, you know, some people are prepared for what I do and some people haven't been quite ready. And that can be an uncomfortable experience when, when I go into a place and the people yeah. aren't quite ready for what yeah. they've heard or what, they've, or what you've told them. But the people that are ready and that are knowledgeable, just like the Bereans, they were knowledgeable in the book of Acts. They were ready for the word of God. Those that are ready for this because of knowledge and, and understanding and their openness to it, and they feel comfortable with it. They are the people that are the most comfortable to go in and um, to present this to. But you know what, what I've been experiencing, Derek, that when I go into play, I just flow with Holy Spirit, and there's nothing strange about that. I just flow with Holy Spirit, and I go deep. And I have been seeing in most every meeting since last April, and that's well over a year now. In most of the meetings, I've seen the line of the tribe of Judah come into the meetings. Wow. And sometimes it's a very just awesome experience. Just he's so amazing when you see him. And, and there are times when I've been led to play music that could be used as a processional for him to come in a very majestic type of processional. And he's just so profoundly amazing. Um, there are times when after I finish playing where people are just silent for a while because God's presence comes in. And again, you know, I can't make that happen. It's all because of what he's doing. And my heart and des desire is to go deep and bring people and have the Lord use me to, to bring people into a very deep, intimate place with him, because that's really where we need to be living from. I hope that answered, you know, what you asked oh, in sure. some way. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's, uh, you know, pe people find what they look, what they're looking for. And maybe those yeah. who are coming with an open heart and an open mind who don't know what they're looking for, maybe they'll find it too and get to encounter it and experience yeah. it. But that was always something that when like you would lead worship or take like, Hey guys, we're going on a journey and I'm not here to put on a show. So if you're just trying to watch me perform or whatever, you're going to miss out. But if right. you go within 
and you spend some time with the Father, I guarantee you, he, you will have you will have an encounter with Him. And those who are just sitting around twiddling their thumbs, it makes it a little awkward. But for those who press in and go with you, they come up to you after with these crazy testimonies, like, "Man, your music! I, I encountered God and healing, and they're just in tears." And for me, that's always been like the greatest. Uh, um, yes. compliment I can get it was like that when you rapped or when you performed or when you played music I felt the Holy Spirit I felt yes. the Spirit of God when you performed there's no greater reward for me that's, that's you know I tell you I resonate with what you're sharing Derek and you know that is you know that's one of the joys in our lives to receive those testimonies and to to know that while you're playing in his glory and his presence is flowing to know while you're doing it, that people's lives are being changed and touched and that God is moving in them and upon them. That is one of the greatest joys for me. Uh, it's, um, it's indescribably wonderful and it's advancing God's kingdom in the earth, which is what we're called to do. As, as being in ministry. That's what I believe all ministry is. It's advancing God's kingdom in the earth, no matter what it is. Yeah. That that's the bottom line. And uh, it is a joy. It's, it's wonderful. It really is. Amen. Well, man, I've enjoyed this uh, this episode with you, man, and uh, we got to make it happen again. And anytime you re release another CD or maybe when you come back this way next year, we'll have you on again and talk about the event. Well, thank you. Thank so. you. I really appreciate you taking the time and having me on. Uh, it's been uh, it's been really good. And I thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out with me and thank you for what you bring to the table for the body of Christ. And uh, yeah. You're resonating with a lot of people, and it's catching on. So uh, it's, it's a blessing to call you brother. So your links, I have the links in the show notes here. We got your CD Baby store link. You can buy the uh, copies there directly. We got your YouTube channel as well with some of your videos and stuff. And then everything else, which is a bunch of stuff on your website, johntussie.com. Everybody go to the website. Purchase the album. You won't be disappointed. Let them know that I sent you and you heard them on this podcast. And, uh, yeah make sure you guys check it out if you want an encounter man that's what people want to do they want something tangible they want to experience the divine and um there's a, there's a lot of things that kind of go in setting that atmosphere and music usually is one of them maybe the first one for a lot of us we put that music on we go within we contemplate we pray we read the scriptures and man just expect god to move and he always does he's longing to meet with us he's waiting for us to put the cell phone down you know he's waiting for us to turn the tv off or whatever and he's wait he's even waiting for us to to quit talking about him sometimes and just go and talk to him you know what i'm saying so that's what it's about and your music embodies that brother thank you so much and we'll have to do it again thank you derek it's been great to be with you and god bless you all right brother see you soon okay god bless bye bye now john tussie ladies and gentlemen Man, I uh, just found out about his work. I, I want to say it might have been yesterday. Like, you, you know, the day is running together for me. But I think I found out about his work yesterday from Gil and Adina Hodges and Kingdom Talks. And uh, uh, reached out to him because he was coming to <laughs> he's coming to a home meeting like 30 minutes away from me in Daphne. But uh, I wanted to go see him. But it's like they've already reached capacity. So I'm not going to be able to make that one. But it's really interesting to see how all things work together for the good of those who love him. Because even talking to John, um, man, if I could just set this story up just for me, it's just synchronicity. It's, it doesn't like just seeing how everything's connected. I talked to Gil, Gil Hodges, Kingdom Talks, and uh, he told me about a lady uh, who was in this area who had a church and they said the church was called the rock church or something uh which i knew what the, i knew what the rock church was and i'm like okay so if they're affiliated with gill if this lady's doing interviews with gill they may be really open-minded and you know going after the kingdom for real so uh i was like i looked up her name and I seen that she was a part of this church. And so the Rock Church, which I, I've, I've attended once, they changed their name to Gates of Zion. And so they're into traveling in the spirit. They're into prophetic worship. And it's a, it's about 30 minutes away as well. So I was like, you know what? I need to go check out 
I need to go check out this church, man, just because they're into Ian Clayton and some of the far out stuff in the spirit, just like us, right? So I'm thinking about going. And then uh, um, I talked to, to John on the phone yesterday, and John's like, what city are you in? Uh, I tell him tell him what city I'm in, and then he, he tells me about, uh, he asked me if I ever heard about uh, uh, Daniel Cooper. And I said, I think I've heard the name. And I just typed his name in really quick, and I had been to his website before because it was showed up as a visited link. Now, it was a couple months ago, but this guy, Daniel, has been on uh, Gil's podcast as well. and was actually on there just a couple of days ago, um, and, um, and he's in my city as well. So I, I, I hit him up, and I go to his website and talk to him, and he goes to Gates of Zion Church, the church that I was thinking about visiting so now me and him are connected and he's going to be a guest on the podcast because he's got something beautiful to bring to the table about breaking down the the hebrew letters and having them come to life and there it's the living word of god and he's going to show you what it means it is alive um so we're going to have him on here and i'm going to go visit the church and just how just the little things man of god's like yeah man i'm i'm tying everything together for you the synchronicities um, just how everything works together again for the good of those who love him. Pythagoras, you guys know, is like very near and dear to my heart, uh, very devout in, in what they brought to the table. And I do like th- th- to read about the things. And they said pro- they, they really believed in the power of music and sound and vibration. And they would wake up every morning, the Pythagoreans, and they would sing worship songs to the creator every morning. This is what we do. We wake up with the sun. In the scriptures, they look to the east, they gaze upon the sun as it's rising, and they just begin to thank God and sing songs to the creator. And they end it every day the same way with the sun going down. They sing songs to the creator. And that's what we do. We wake up and we sing songs and we pray and we thank the Father for the day. And I'm telling you, when you wake up early and you beat everybody up in your area and it's like there's there's a stillness there. Before everybody's waking up, before the hustle and bustle, man, when I was really digging into my book, <clears throat> writing it, I made sure that I was getting up at 4.30 um, every morning, and there was just stuff coming out of me that I'm going back and reading it, and I'm like, man, did I write that? I don't even, it doesn't even feel like I, I, I wrote this stuff, because I'm going back and reading it, and I'm quoting Bible stories that I... I'm having to go reread to make sure, because like, I'm having to check myself, like, is that really in the Bible? Because it, I... It, just this encounter, man, and these downloads from the Father. He's saying, write this. And it, once I'm typing, I'm just going. There's stuff in the book. I'm like, does this need to be in there? But it's like, you know what? In them early mornings, the downloads, leave it. I'm leaving it. It might sound silly. I don't know if it fits. I start talking about Balloon Boy and relating that back to uh, angelic contact and supernatural experiences and people wanting to... Um, uh, to lie about angelic encounters, right, and uh, and and make things happen, and I and I just got on the balloon boy tangent and just told his story and related it back to how people make up stories and even get their children to lie for fame and for to write books, and you know this is going on in the Christian realm as well. Don't just believe everybody just because they're very um, well spoken and they have an interesting story, because many of us out here have itching ears and we we'll just believe anything that the people tell us. We have to rightly divide the word of truth and uh and and, and look at the uh you know the fruit that comes from somebody's life and the fruit and i'm always um skeptical skeptical about these angelic contacts which i i promote yeah I, I, that's beautiful but i want to make sure that's what you really had you know and i think that once character i think that in the bible when someone encountered an angelic being i think they were changed man I think they had an encounter and it changed them and one encounter and it changed them forever. But us in the West, we're like so spiritual that we're having encounters every day with the angelic and with the spirit realm. And we're still stuck in our ways and still addicted and still all of this stuff that we got going on. Um, you know, so uh, it's all about the fruit. And I'm for all of the super far out spiritual stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm for falling out, speaking in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost and 
signs and wonders and i'm for that but i believe in a life transformed is the it should be the the greatest miracle that we can see and walking in character and walking in love and integrity and being able to maintain that i believe is the true miracle these days and i think that that's what all of those stuff should should embody you know what i'm saying so you know in in my book i, I approach it from this uh, the, you know every side the, the skeptic my encounters why should you believe me here it is just laying it out there and then i go into my encounters and i go into what the scripture says and i go into what eastern thought says and so i think you guys are going to enjoy it um everything that i talk about on the podcast i've had to, i've been able to sit down and really just get it out of me and just go into detail um in writing the book i'm finding out how much i don't know right i feel like i'm an expert and i know so much on these topics and subjects but as i'm doing i'm researching a little bit more i'm like man i know nothing (laughs) i don't know as much as i thought i knew you know i just know a portion of it but that little bit of portion i know is so deep and that just shows you how intricate this stuff is and how we we should respect people and uh because nobody has it all figured out everybody has their peace and they do that peace really good and they have that peace right so respect that that's what it's about book is almost done i'm excited to get it out uh, we're going to edit it. Um, I'm going to let my wife go through it with me one time um, Friday. So we should better put some finishing touches on it then. Cover art's done. Looks amazing. I'm just ready to get it out. It's been over a year in the making, and um, it's going to be good. So, man, the power of music, again, relating it back to Pythagoras and um, sound and vibration, relating it back to King David, playing the harp, a psalmist. Like the the music itself is powerful. Again, I think it's the word of God, man. I'm I'm just getting these revelations of how like sacred geometry is the word of God. Like, cause when you speak, you're forming sacred, complex, sacred geometric patterns that are made out of love. If people are going into the spirit realm and they're seeing these shapes, then they're spinning and cogs and they're spinning and and it's sound, it's vibration, it's communication. Um, it's deep, man. It, it's constant. It's not gonna lie to you. It's going to go forth and do what it what it was set out to do. Those notes and those tones and those frequencies, they're gonna make you feel a certain type of way. They're gonna relax you. I mean, whatever, man. And and to understanding that of when they all come together. Now we have these tones by themselves, and it has just talking about combining them. When you combine three of them together, they make a chord. And that chord produces a sound that goes forth and does something else. And when that's combined with another chord, then that creates a, a whole nother tone and a whole nother frequency. And uh, it's it's really deep and, and, and beautiful and intricate. And um, and I believe we should look into it. And I think that the ancients understood this stuff. And when we and it gets into string theory it gets into the music of the spheres and the planets and alignments and we look at pythagoras is where he gets the pythagorean uh pythagorean theorem from and the way that we uh play music and 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 structure chords and all of that stuff comes from pythagoras um i was wanting to talk to him i didn't i I know he's really big into the piano right in the in the chords and tones and keys and stuff but um and and like the drumming you know, I think somebody might have mentioned it in chat, but so there, there, there's drum patterns and drum rhythms for timing signatures that you hear the timing signatures of the drum. And in one of my first mystical songs, I, I said, I said, the rhythm of the drum puts me under hypnosis, anointed by the fire of tongues that's cloven. Hebrews, mystics, prophets chosen, share it with the world. Now, truth is spoken. Um, playing the drums. It's mystical encounter, putting your body in a trance as you're playing the drums. Uh, there's a lot of churches, even today, Church of God, a bunch of them. They they uh, they will not let a drum set in their church, and then there's certain ones who will let the drums in that they only will allow you to play like a four four timing, you know, just uh, the even numbers do do da do. Just a little simple metronome. Anything intricate, anything offbeat, anything double time. They they feel like because going back to Africa and the drumming and all that, that you can conjure spirits through the drumming. So they they 
equate the two and they won't let any of those weird drum signatures be played in the church and you look at like james brown and the drumming and the patterns and he starts dancing and they look at that as like demonic but the scripture says that david danced violently before the lord and that there was a dance that came forth in, in, in his expression of praise even and you need rhythm to dance man when you hear them them, them these, these scriptures man they're tribal people so the, the music is going to have a tribal sound it's going to have bongos it's going to have you know it talks about having the uh it says praise him with all of these instruments praise him with the string instruments uh praise him with the timbrel the tambourine with the high end and with the low end the low end is the drum praising him with the drum um the new tool album they said like that that whole theme for that new album is is in sevens um and they really had seven songs on there and then three interludes uh seven songs and then they played a lot of their timing signatures in seven and it seems like it would throw you off because like it like it, it from because like you can do timing you can count the timing you can feel when it's going to change or whatever and the seven with it not being an even number you would think that it was gonna you would be able to tell like ah, oh, why didn't they go back to the the same uh timing signature or why didn't they play that same riff but it flows it works and they found a way to make it work and tie in these different uh not only the tones together but the frequencies together and the and the timing signatures of the music that puts your body and your mind in a hypnotic state uh you can go into a nightclub and if there's a loud really now loud music playing or a concert doom, 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 your body will your 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 heart will match the rhythm of that beat eventually and it'll start matching the rhythm of the of the drums or the the bass playing on the speakers They've got these little um, these little metronome um, things that swing. They're like metronome pendulums or something. They go back and forth, right? And you wind them up and you set them and they just go tick, tock, tick, tock. And there's a whole table of them. They're color coordinated. There's a video. They have the whole table and they wind them all up and they're all random. They're all just random. But eventually they all synchronize together the synchronicity they start flowing together so they're all back and forth and it was but eventually it's like 80 of them and they all match and do the same synchronization with the tempo and it all matches they find that rhythm and they all getting together and that's how we do in the spirit we walk in the spirit and we get together then we match what the lord's doing in the earth we hear the voice of the Lord, we repeat it, we walk in his ways, and we start walking together in unison as the body of Christ. Literally, walking in the spirit, the word uh, walking in the Greek, and the Bible talks about walking in the spirit, it's the, it's the Greek word stoicheo, and it means to walk in unison as in a cadence, left, right, left, right, left, right. When the spirit is leading, we're following. The spirit says go left, you go left. The spirit says go right, you go right. That's the, the term of walking in the spirit is being so in tune with what the Lord is doing in the earth that we're following him together, not just by ourselves, but all of us together in cadence or with the father's heart. That's how when we come together, we become the church. We become the body of Christ. Literally, we formulate Christ on the earth. We are the return of Christ to the earth when we come back, when we come together and we have all things in common. There he is in the midst. And we literally make up the body of Christ. Some of us are the hands, the feet, the eyes, the nose, the ears, the arms. We have different functions. We do different things. We're good at different things. We study different things. But when we come together, we literally make up like Voltron, like I say, the body of Christ here on the earth manifested. Who is that? The, um, the environmentalist kids, the cartoon all the kids come together with their rings or whatever. They put them in Captain Planet. When all the kids came together, they put their rings together and then Captain Planet showed up. It's like a picture of Jesus. When we come together and we put our hearts together and we cry out for God, we ask him to show up in the midst. There he is. He said, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst. And that's literally how it is. He shows up. 
We start playing music. We start talking about him. He shows up. You can feel him. There's people who listen to the podcast all the time. And they're like, man, I got chills listening. I'll be flowing in the spirit at the end, giving words. And people are just hitting me up. Like, hey, man, that was for me. I just want you to know that I'm going to keep going. Your words have encouraged me. And it's when we get in tune with the spirit. See, most of the time I know. I know when I'm in the spirit, I can feel it. I know that God is speaking to somebody. I don't know who all the time. There's thousands of people listening to this and I don't know who it's for, but they know because they start getting chills up their back. They're, they just feel it deep down in their, in their soul and it feels like talking directly to them. See, that's the Holy Spirit communicating with you. There was a there was a comment um, uh, today. Somebody was asking me if I was a Christian and they probably they heard some of my stuff or seen somebody I interviewed and probably thought I wasn't a Christian or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Um, I may not be the best Christian. I may not be, um, you know, I, I may have I may be off on a lot of things. Uh, I feel like I'm right about one thing. Right. Christ crucified. Um, and he's like, well, are you pointing? Are you pointing people to idolatry or are you pointing people to Jesus? It's like, well, I'm pointing you to Jesus. I'm pointing you to God the father but it's his job to draw you to him and to convict you and to deal with your heart i can't do that i can share my heart we could talk about deep mysteries of god but it's it's up to the holy spirit to convict you of sin to uh to to woo you to the lord it's his job he does a really good job at it too he knows what he's doing he uses our words he uses us right and if he can use a donkey, if he can use the writing on the wall, if he can use all of these broken people, because that's who he wants to use, then he can use me and he can use you. He's got a job for you. Again, like I always say, get with God, work with God versus working with, working against him. It's a lot more fun. So with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. I've got another podcast planned for you guys tomorrow. I'm excited. I'm going to be talking to somebody who has been a champion in the faith for me for some years. I've looked up to this lady um, ever since I got born again and her music and ministry has really just been a a beacon of hope for me, um, especially growing in the prophetic and her music. And so I'm not going to tell you who it is until uh, the show, until you see us live tomorrow. So (laughs) stay tuned. Don't miss an episode. Sit right there. Um, so I want to say a huge thank you again to everybody supporting my work via Patreon. If you believe in what I'm doing and you can support like any level of giving, if you would like to partner any level and there's tears and there's rewards and there's music and there's cool stuff. You get access to all that kind of stuff. Any level of giving patreon.com backslash true seeker. The uh, link is in the description. It, it really goes a long way. So uh, there's not a lot of money in doing this. So uh, most of the time, uh, YouTube demonetizes my videos. If we mention Jesus, if we talk about anything uh, controversial, they're not even going to let me put ads on it. So there's like no money from it. So your 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 prayers and your donations and all of that stuff, it really does go a long way helping me to continue to, to do this. And I am really grateful that you guys believe in the work and want to partner with me. Um, so yeah, with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. And I'm just going to scan through the comments right quick and make sure I ain't miss nobody and just call everybody out. Padawan, shout out. Been seeing your comments. Tiger King, um, Estevan. Uh, let's see who else we got. Robert. Uh, David Jones, Ali, Zach, Jarrell, uh, all of you people, Adam Starseed Bay, everybody hanging out with us in the chat, everybody hanging out on um, Facebook as well, Bethany, everybody just poking their heads in. I could see you watching. <laughs> it, you may not comment, but I could. it shows me who's watching. Shout out, man. Love you guys. And so with that being said, I'm going to say peace and shalom. We're going to do it again. Peace, peace. We'll see you later. Your will is so much higher than mine So much higher than mine Your will is so much deeper than mine So much deeper than mine Well that does it for this episode folks To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker Podcast Head over to truthseeker.com And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards Go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker Truthseeker